Hello everyone and welcome to Numerical Computing with Python Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to solve differential equations with time varying inputs and coefficients in Python. To make the long story short, I will briefly summarize the material that will be presented in this tutorial. First we will start with the test case. As a test case we are using an example of a pendulum system shown in this figure. You will learn how to model this system by creating a free body diagram, then by using the second Newton's law you will write an ordinary differential equation that's given over here where force F is a time varying force, then we will introduce the state space variables and we will transform this model in a state space form that you can see over here. Once we have the state space form, I will open my Python editor and I will explain how to solve this system in Python. Before I start, I would like to mention that it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this post and this video that you're currently watching. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Okay, let's start. Over here, we can see a ball with a mass of M and we assume that this ball is attached by using a massless rod to the pivot point Q. We assume that the force F is acting at the ball. The force F is always perpendicular to the rod. The length of the rod is L and G is the gravitational acceleration constant. We assume that the mass of the rod is significantly smaller than the mass of the ball and consequently we can neglect the mass of the rod. The next step is to create a free body diagram of this system. The free body diagram is shown over here. N is the normal reaction force exerted by the rod on the ball. Mg is the gravitational force. F is the control force. N is the normal unit vector in the direction of the rod and tau is the tangent unit vector perpendicular to the rod. Note that N and tau define two perpendicular axes. The next step, of course, is to use the second Newton's law to derive the equation of motion. From the second Newton's law, we obtain this classical equation and if we project, project this equation onto the tau axis, that is on this axis over here, we will obtain this equation. In this equation, theta is the angle of displacement of the rod with respect to the vertical position. So keep in mind that fact. And a tau is, of course, tangential acceleration. That tangential acceler acceleration is given by this formula over here, where theta 2 dot it is the second derivative of theta. In this video tutorial, we explain how to integrate, or better to say numerically solve this equation under the assumption that this force f of t is a time varying function. For generality, we assume that this force is a function, however, this function is defined at certain discrete time points. That is to say, we have the values of this function at the discrete time points. The other values will be determined by interpolation. The approach presented in this tutorial can easily be generalized to the case when the analytical form of the function is perfectly known. Let us write a state space model corresponding to this equation. The tangential acceleration is given by this equation and if we substitute the tangential acceleration in the equation number 2, we obtain this classical equation. And if we divide this equation by ml and if we move this part to the left hand side, we obtain the equation number 5. Let us write the state space model corresponding to the equation number 5. First, we introduce the state space variable. We are saying that theta is simply x1, theta dot is x2, where x1 and x2 are new variables, or better to say state space variables. And by differentiating the first equation, we get that x1 dot is x2, and x2 dot is theta 2 dot, 
and from our dynamics, that is from the equation number 5, we obtain this expression, and if we substitute x1, if we substitute theta by x1, we obtain this equation over here, and consequently the state space model has this form. Next, I will explain how to solve, or better to say, how to integrate this system in Python. Here's my Python environment. As you can see over here, I'm using the spider environment, and this Python environment is super nice and super useful simply because you can select a piece of code, you can evaluate it, and over here you can see results. You can debug your code, you can inspect all the variables, etc. Here I need to mention that this code file is posted on my GitHub page whose link is given in the description below this video. The next step is to import the necessary libraries. First, I import the NumPy library. Then, from SciPy integrate, I import odint. This function is used for solving differential equations in Python. odint stands for Ordinary Differential Equation Integrator. The next step is, of course, to import the plotting library. Next, we need to define the constants. The g constant is, of course, 9.81. I assume that the length of the rod is equal to 1. Here's the length. Next, I assume that the mass is equal to 5 kilograms. Before I even explain the integration process in Python, it's very useful and instructive to understand the interpolation of functions in Python. For that purpose, I constructed a small example that you can see over here. First, I define a time array over here. So let's execute this piece of code in order to see this time array. I'll simply select this variable and I will evaluate. Okay, so this is my time array and then I will define a sinusoidal function for the values given in this time array. So here's our sinusoidal function. Let's plot this sinusoidal function. And here it is. Now, let us assume that I want to evaluate, or better to say, to approximate the value of this sinusoidal function at this point over here, 0 0.602. For that purpose, I need to interpolate this function. And I can interpolate this function by simply calling this numpy function, interp. Let's see the result. Aha, uh -huh, here is the result. So the interpolated value between the points 9 and 10 is 0 0.566. Let's test the accuracy of this interpolation. We can test the accuracy by simply seeing the value of the sinusoidal function and this point and at this point and just by comparing the results. So let's do that. So I will take my sinusoidal array here, array, and then let's evaluate this value at 9. Mm -hmm. It's 0 0.54, perfect. Let's see the value of 10. It is 0 0.59, perfect. And we can see that our interpolated value is actually between these two values, and that's a good proof of principle that in the interpolation process is actually working. Next, let us solve our equation, or better to say, let us integrate the dynamics. For the integration of the dynamics, we need to assume the start time will be zero, the end time will be five seconds, and between start and end time, we will have 1,000 points. Next, let us create a discrete time vector of the points. And let us verify this vector. Okay, perfect. The start point, the end point, and we have 1,000 points in between. Or better to say, 1,001 points in between. Next, let us define the force input. Over here, I'm defining a force input that's simply equal to 
sinus t plus cosinus 2 times t. Let us plot this input. Here is the input. That is, we are assuming that this force, or better to say the magnitude of this force, has these values over time. The next step is to write a function, an ordinary Python function, that will evaluate the right-hand side of our state space model for the state x1, x2, for the constants g and l and m, as well for the value of the force f. To do that, we've wrote this function over here. This function takes the following input argument. x is the state vector. The first entry of this vector is x1. The second entry is x2. In Python, this vector can actually be a list or can be an array. That doesn't matter. The second input argument is the current simulation time. And this is the internal time to the solver. The next input are the time points. These time points are actually necessary to interpolate the values of the function f for the time t, that's internal time in the solver. The next three input arguments are g, l, and m constants, the gravitational acceleration, length of the rod, and mass constant. And the last input argument is the force array. This is the value of the force at these time points. And these two arrays or vectors will be used to interpolate the values of f for certain times. This step, that is the interpolation step, is given over here. Over here, we are interpolating the force value at the time t by using the time points and the force array. Once we compute this value of t, we simply implement the right-hand side of the state space model. That is, we simply implement this equation, and the implementation is straightforward. It's given over here. Notice that this is the force applied. This is the interpolated value of the applied force. Since in this particular case, we know the analytical form of the force, we don't need to interpolate anything. Instead of interpolating, you can simply write something like this, and you can get the exact value of the force F at a certain time instant. However, in many cases, especially in the cases when you obtain data from some measurements, you will obtain discrete time data. And consequently, it would be a good idea to have an interpolation procedure that you can integrate in your solver. This is also important for predictive control and model predictive control applications. And finally, this function will return the right-hand side of the equation, that is, it will return x dot. Once we created this function that defines our state space model, we need to define the initial state for simulation. Over here, I'm assuming that the position and angular velocity are 0 and 0. That is, I start from 0 initial state. And the final state, step is to solve the problem, that is, to generate the state space trajectory. For that purpose, I use the odint function. I specify the name of my function defining the state space model. The second argument is the initial state. The third argument is the simulation time. And the last one, two, three, four, five arguments are grouped in this tuple, and these are the parameters of the solvers. This should be these values, that is the order of these variables, should correspond to the order given over here. And that's very important to keep in mind. So let's run the solver and let's see the result. Over here, I made, uh, made a small error and uh, I have to correct that. It's simply the matter of fact of indentation. 
So let me run this again. Uh, and the issue, of course, is over here since I played with this part over here. Now everything should be fine and it should work perfectly. Okay. We are able to generate the trajectory. So here is our trajectory. Of course, it's an array having two columns and 1001 rows. The number of rows should correspond to the time steps. And finally, let us plot the simulated trajectories. And here are the simulate. Here are the simulated trajectory. The blue line is theta. The red line is theta dot. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.